This video is brought to you by Paperlike. In this video, I am going to be walking you through what apps, accessories, and things that I have on my iPad Pro generally geared towards productivity, self-development, organization, and note-taking. Firstly, I wanna talk about the iPad itself. So I have a 12.9 inch iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard, and on the screen, I have a Paperlike screen protector. I debated whether to get the 11 inch iPad. I went for the bigger size, and I have absolutely no regrets. I love having more screen space so to have maybe my Kindle on one side and my book notes on the other and to be able to write my book notes as I read so having that extra screen space I don't know if I could actually do it without it. I decided on the paper like screen protector because I wanted something that felt natural to write on. You get a lot more control of the pencil while you're writing it doesn't feel like you're sort of slipping and sliding all around the screen so you can sketch write and draw with a bit more control and the iPad pencil is just more enjoyable to use in general. I do not have have beautiful handwriting by anyone's standards, but I assure you that it is much less beautiful without the Paperlike screen protector. The Paperlike also reduces glare and it reduces fingerprints. You can get free shipping worldwide with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Here's a quick clip of my first impression of the Paperlike just to show you how different it is from using your normal iPad. We made this just like running my hands across it, I understand what they mean when they say that it sounds like paper. Oh, and you can feel like the resistance as you write. Are you kidding? Okay, my very first impression, I just wrote two letters and this feels wildly better to write on. As someone who reads a lot of books and wants to take notes on a lot of books and doesn't want to lug around my magic keyboard with me everywhere, this is going to be so helpful. If you want to buy a paper-like screen protector for yourself, I will have a link down in the description below where you can click to purchase. The first thing that you're going to see when you open up my iPad is a really minimal and simple background. I didn't want anything to be distracting from the apps or for it to look cluttered. I've also kept everything on one page on my iPad. I decided that I didn't want more than one page. I wanted to keep it really simple. So on the left, I have all of my shortcuts, which I'll talk through in a second, and then I have all of my apps organized into folders. The very first folder that I have is a utilities folder. There's really nothing interesting in here. Probably two apps that I can show you. Firstly, LastPass, which I won't open because it's got everything in it. I couldn't live without LastPass. It keeps all of my passwords managed so that I can easily remember them all because they're all different and it would be so complicated without LastPass. I had a life without LastPass and it just wasn't a good one. I'm so happy that I have it. Then I have a program called Block It, which I talk about in a video coming up soon. Basically this blocks all of the elements of your social media feeds. So you've got Facebook, you can block the news feed, stories, marketplace, watch. I don't block groups because I have my own group that I need to manage. You've got YouTube, so I shouldn't even be telling you this, this is damaging to me, but you can block all of the related videos, trending videos, subscriptions, I'll just see my watch time go down after this video, and Instagram. So I actually paid for YouTube and Instagram, but Facebook is for free, and it costs like $2 for YouTube and Instagram, and honestly has saved me so much time, it is well worth it the dollar or two that you pay for it. Then you've got my date and time folder. Firstly, I have my multi-timer app. I have the free version of this app, but there is a paid version. Basically on here, you can have multiple timers, as you can see, and you can have them structured in different ways. There's lots of different types of timers that you can do. So if I hit timers, there's Pomodoro, count up, you can do interval timers, step timers, a stopwatch, a lap, etc. And you can all have them on your pages that you create. So I can only have one page because I have the free version, but you can, if you have the paid version create multiple pages and multiple boards for all of your timers. So my timers are really just my afternoon routine timers. So complete my daily plan, do my skincare, get cozy, daily tidy, and then I've got a Pomodoro if I want to chuck on a Pomodoro at all. So that is my multi-timer app. Then I just have the clock app. Then I have a tracker, which is a time tracking app that I discovered a few months ago that I am so happy to have found. So I've tried time tracking before multiple times and I've tried semi-successfully, but I've always found it to be really painful is the main thing. I use the paid version of this app. It's probably something that you could just pay for literally on a once-off basis when you want to do time tracking and really get your life together a little bit and figure out where you're spending time on that maybe isn't benefiting your life and where you're spending time on that is really enhancing your life. So that way you can balance things out so that you're doing the better things more. So basically with this app, you create all of your categories and you can color code them as well. So I've got green for things that I'm like, yes, do more of those. Blue for things that I'm like, yes, that 
about stuff that I should be doing and then I've got read for things that I'm like, you know what, there's nothing necessarily wrong with this stuff, but I don't want it to be consuming all of my time. And then I think I've got some neutral things that it's like, you know, that's just gonna happen as well as sleep, eating, commute afternoon routine, things like that. Before you start a task, you would actually click on, for example, planning and strategy. And then when you're done, you would click on it again. And then you get to write in some notes. So you might have said that you were gonna do planning and strategy, but the reality is, is that you ended up surfing Instagram for two hours. In which case you might wanna write a note saying, hey, got distracted by this, but this is the perfect app for time tracking. And then you can get a little view of your week and you can see how much time did you spend in the green? How much time did you spend in the, you know, good but neutral, how much time did you spend in the red? It's probably not for everyone, but for certain people, absolutely helpful. The next folder that I have is my note-taking folder. So here I have good notes. To be totally honest, the main reason that I have this is because I had to test out the Life Map Daily Digital version. So this is the Life Map Daily Digital, if you haven't seen it. Basically, the Life Map Daily Digital, you can navigate through everything by clicking links. So I've done a lot of link clicking to test that everything is working. It's just a digital version of the planner that is also interactive PDF-wise. And that is really the main reason that I use GoodNotes. And I've got my Google Keep app. I actually try not to use this too much, but sometimes it's just so easy to dump things in. You can see I've made some 2021 plans. Me and a friend just sat down and created a whole bunch of plans for 2021. We themed our months. February is the month of love, everyone. Make sure that you do a vegan cheese board sunset. So that is very often my capture tool, although I'm trying to move away from it. I just find it so difficult because it has the photo taking function. The next app that I have is my Things app. You guys know this is my OG capturing tool. I bloody love things. Not really too much to say about this. I mainly just use the inbox function. And after I have captured a whole bunch of stuff, during my weekly reset, I'll take everything that I put into the inbox and then I will chuck that into my Notion which is where I really store everything. So it's more of a capturing tool than it is a to-do organizer. Then I've got Procreate. I don't do anything interesting with Procreate. Mainly it's creating little arrows and doodles like this for my videos if I ever need one. I will make those in Procreate. Um, but I do want to try out more Procreate. There's so many tutorials on Skillshare that I'd love to give a go. Then there is my file storage. Google Photos is a recent addition to my library that I've been kind of obsessed with. I love the search function on this. You can search by face and it's literally picked up all the people. It picks up the worst photos of individuals though. And then I can click on those people or individuals and then I get to see all of my photos of those people's or pets. And it's wonderful. Wow, we need more photos of Luna. I can also do places, I can do things. They create little animations. I am absolutely obsessed with this as a photo organizer. I was using iCloud until I discovered this. And now I'm like, oh, this is amazing. You can just see your photos so much more easily in Google Photos and it's really fun to browse through. Then there is my media folder. So see, I've got Stan, Binge, Prime, all those kind of things. We don't have a real physical TV that's set up very well. So a lot of the time we watch on my iPad because it's one of the biggest screens that we have. In here I have Fit On, which I have talked to absolute death, but I do love it. It's such a good app. I have the completely free version and they just have so many free workouts. I bloody love dance workouts and clearly they've picked up on that. Pilates dance workouts I like to do in Fit On because it's free and it just keeps me from getting sucked down the YouTube hole, which I really like. Then I have the Skillshare app, which of course we love the Skillshare app. We love Skillshare. Then we have Readwise. I'm pretty obsessed with this app. I do have the paid premium version of this app, just to be clear. So Readwise, the app helps you to basically collect all of your highlights from your books in Kindle. Then it can give you a little daily review where you can go through a whole bunch of your highlights just so that you can be revisiting the information that you've already read. You guys know that I am big on revisiting. I think that it is important <laughs> that we don't just keep on trying to seek out all of this new information when a lot of the information that we need is the fundamentals and the stuff that we've already visited before. We need reminders of the things that are important. This is the daily review. Basically, you can go through, you can discard things. So I often make accidental highlights. So I like to discard my accidental highlights or you can click keep and then it'll take you to the next one. And you can have your little highlight feed as well. You can organize things by tags, which is amazing. And this is perfect for a content creator or anyone that just reads a lot of books and wants to retain that information. Then I have my apps that are down in my doc. Firstly, I have, this is called Week Cal, I believe. So this, 
I mainly use if I want to do any time blocking because I have been searching for an iPad calendar app that lets me drag around my events and also change the start and finish times using my Apple Pencil. And strangely, this is the only app that I've been able to find that lets me do that that isn't glitchy. So I did actually try using Fantastical, but it was really glitchy. So I've moved to here. I purely use this if I'm time blocking. It's set to my time blocking calendar. And I usually time block if I'm really busy or sometimes I'll try to time block my week a week in advance. I'm not much of a time blocker in advance. I'm more of a daily time blocking kind of gal. But if I do have a very busy week, I like time block, put it all into my calendar. And then on a daily basis, I'll do a proper time block based on what's come up, what's changed in my planner. Then I have my Google calendar, as you can see, which is the actual calendar that I like to use. I have my Notion, which I just don't think needs any more explanation. You guys have seen my Notion. I'll actually have a video linked down below where you can see a full on tour because it's just a bit intense to include in this video. I have my Kindle app. I use my Kindle app to read most of my books. I do have some physical books, but for the most part, everything is in my Kindle library. Then I have Overcast. I've yet to find a podcast app that I'm really in love with. I just think that it could be done so much better. And it's weird that there isn't like a YouTube for podcasts. I know Spotify has tried, but I just don't think they're quite there yet. Then I have a shortcut that helps me to add to things really quickly. So if I want to add a to-do to things, I can go directly there. It helps me to capture things really easily. And that's my doc. So then there are my shortcuts. I've set up a bunch of my shortcuts based on when I would need them pretty much. So firstly, on my shortcuts, you've got my morning routine. If you click that, it opens up my Google Calendar because I am notorious for forgetting that I have events. So I need to open this up in the morning and then I have Fit On because often I like to work out in the morning and also Overcast because often I like to listen to podcasts in the morning. Sometimes that switches up and I change it to Audible. I like listening to Audible and podcasts. I kind of switch between the two. Right now I'm in a podcast stage. Then I have my afternoon routine and that opens up my calendar once again to see what's on for tomorrow. It opens up my timer that I was showing you guys before and it opens up my Notion so I can see what's in my planning hub that I've created in Notion that is in my Notion pack. Then I have journaling and that just takes me straight to my journaling page in Notion. I won't show you too much more of that. And my reading mode. So reading mode opens Kindle and it opens Notion. And that way I can take this over here and have both of them on the same page. Oh, it didn't open my reading page. Maybe it's because that was already open, but usually it opens my book notes page so that I can just get straight into taking book notes. I've got my weekly marriage meeting. So I click that whenever me and Luke do a little weekly marriage meeting. We try to do that at least every two weeks. And then I've got my weekly planning. So whenever me and my sister are doing our weekly life map date with my planner, I open up my weekly planning page and it goes straight to my planning hub. Um, this is in the Notion pack and it's the greatest accompaniment to my planner and I use this to help direct me on what I want to plan into my week and sometimes my days just depending on how busy I am at the time is when I use that planning hub and that is the gist of my iPad. If you liked this video you will probably enjoy my whole tech playlist. I also have a video coming out soon where I show you some of my favorite apps for productivity and self-care that are more on the iPhone so make sure that you subscribe if you haven't already so that you can keep an eye out for that. I appreciate you guys so very much. Click on the tech playlist on the screen to see more of my tech related videos and I will see you soon.